Hello, welcome back again to another exciting tutorial with me, Romy Fauzi. Okay, in this episode, uh, this is a more a tips for creating a projectile movement, projectile uh, motion, where we can create uh, a cannon that can shoot a a ball, cannon ball, and uh, we can predict where the ball will fall. So uh, here uh, we are going to use a projectile movement formula and I'm going to explain this first so basically what we are going to do is like this here uh, we have a cannon and we can highlight a the area of the ground just like uh, a strategy game and upon clicking we can shoot a ball to that point here and uh, what uh, what the the known variables are the distance uh, we, we have the distance between the cannon and the target uh, position or the, the target shoots and we have the X X and Z plane uh, distance and also uh, we can uh, we will uh, we also have the uh, I mean uh, we 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 need to know the y but we have the distance and we can also define the the time uh the the shooting time uh, or the the duration where the ball will will, will uh start launch uh, until it drops to the target position so basically the projectile formula we can split into to equation the first is the horizontal uh, the horizontal distance equation which is the x distance and uh, for s um, for the distance uh, on the horizontal axis equation it equals uh, the initial velocity times uh, uh, multiplied by time and since we already know the distance we can search for its uh, initial velocity so if we alter the equation to uh, look for the velocity then we can uh, write it as uh, as uh, like this uh, like uh, velocity in the x direction equals uh, distance in the x direction uh, divided by time and for the y uh, the vertical movement equation we have this formula here which is the y distance or the the highest distance equals the initial velocity y multiply by times and then it it's being subtract by half multiply by gravity and also multiply by time square 2 so with this equation we can alter this in order to find the initial uh, y velocity so if we modify then we can move the the second part of the equation here to the left side and it will become like this uh, y plus half multiplied by j gravity and also multiplied by time square 2 equals uh, velocity y multiplied by t uh, by time and then if we move the multiplier here the time multiplier and then we divide the left side so we have this equation here and after we calculate this equation we have the final form of the equation which is uh, velocity y equals y distance uh, divided by time and then plus half multiplied by gravity also multiplied by time so with this equation we can calculate the initial velocity of x and also the initial initial velocity of y and we will have the initial velocity needed to launch the ball and then to make sure that the ball falls uh, onto our uh, our our cursor so let's do this just go back to unity and then I've already created a scene here so we have a plane with a texture on it and then I also create a cannon and this cannon is basically an empty game object with the z-axis pointing here pointing to the 
x axis on the world and it has a child of spear object and also another child of the cylinder so it looks like a cannon and then I have also an empty ga uh, empty game object parented to the cannon object and I put this in front of the <coughs> in front of the cannon so we can fire the ball from this position here later and I also have a uh, I have created a spear and with the spear I've added a rigid body and also make this piece uh, make this spear as a uh, prefab so once we have this all uh, component set uh, I'm going to just delete this uh, spear prefab so since we already have this on a prefabs folder and also I've created a 2D sprite which is this object here and this is basically a sprite so I created a new sprite by right clicking on the project folder create a sprite and then choose circle and then I put it on a scene and make sure on the X rotation it's set to 90 and also I've set the color to a yellowish color and also with a transparent value maybe 100 so if we put it here it will have some transparency on top of it and this object will act as a indicator our cursor so just let's hide it below the ground for a while here okay so now let's jump into the scripting so I'm going to go to our scripts folder and then I'm going to create a new C sharp script and I'm going to name this projectile and let's open the script okay so now we need a couple variable first I'm going to need a reference to our ball prefabs but I'm not going to store its game object properties but I'm going to store its rigid body component so just create a new variable called rigid body and then I'm going to create a new game object prefabs and this is going to be the cursor and also create a layer, ma layer mask for our layer since we are going to uh, use a layer to define which object that uh, will be allowed to to be shot at and then create a new private variable to store our camera so just name this cam and inside start I'm going to grab the camera by insert the value camera.main into the cam uh, variable because camera.main means that the first enabled camera tag with main camera so if your scene have a camera that has a main camera tag then it will it will grab that camera if you haven't do, done this yet then make sure that your camera has a main camera tag and let's create the method to calculate this velocity so I'm going to create a new vec uh, new method that returns vector 3 and let's rename this calculate velocity and this method will need the target vector and also the origin the starting point and also the time the duration that the ball will uh, keep flying on the air until it reaches the destination and we can create a new so I'm going to create a comment here so we define the distance x and y first so let's create a new vector 3 and this is going to be the distance y and sorry this will be the distance first and then the distance will be the target 
subtracted by the origin vector and then I need to create a distance on the x and z plane and basically this is distance the same vector as the distance but we are going to set the y the y uh, component of the distance exit to a zero value a value of zero so it will only uh, it will only have the uh, value of the x it will only keep the value of the x and the z component and then create a float that represent our distance so this is the the y position the distance of the 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 vertical height and this I think this will be the distance dot y yeah the first one here and for the distance of uh, the x c plane this will be distance dot x z and we are going to get the magnitude or the length of the factor so it will be a float and now we can calculate the velocity so the velocity basically we are going to create a uh, velocity y and sorry velocity x and the velocity x will will if we see uh, if we get from this formula it will be the distance divided by time so now we are going to use the distance horizontal distance or the xz plane distance and divided by time and for the vertical velocity we are going to also get the distance or the vertical distance the, dis uh, the sy here float divided by time and then plus by half times gravity and in this gravity we are going to grab the physics gravity but since it's a negative value we are go going to grab its absolute value so dot math f we are going to use the method math f dot absolute and then here we are going to get the physics dot gravity dot y value and then we can also multiply this by time and where do we what is the value of this uh, float here is basically what we have here so if you go to the edit project settings you can see here under physics we have a gravity of uh, on the y-axis is minus 9.81 and uh, this is basically a negative value because as we see on the project settings but with this function we are going to s return the positive value of this value here so it will be always positive and then now since we already have a the initial velocity on both axes I'm going to rename this to XZ velocity the horizontal and now we can create a new vector tree result and for the result we are going to get the normalized distance first uh, so let's get the distance normalize I think and or sorry we are getting the second one here the distance XC normalize so this is this will return the direction of our factor here to our distance but it will return uh, with the length of one so it the value is normalized and then for the result we are going to multiply this by our horizontal plane velocity and we are going to set its y value to our velocity y and then we are going to return our result here our factor here so basically what we are doing here is we are applying this uh, value here that we already put the equation inside 
and we are applying both of this value into our new created vector here okay so now the next thing we need to do is to create a throwing method so or launch projectile method and here what we need to do is to create a new ray first and let's name this cam ray so basically this is the ray that we are going to shoot from our mouse position from the camera space into the world basically we are going to use the camera and then we are going to use the method called screen point to ray and this is basically a returns array going from camera through a screen point and we are going to input a factor of our mouse position dot mouse position and this is basically is going to calculate the position on the world uh, where our mouse lies so it will move the cursor on uh, uh, on the plane re relative to our mouse position and we are going to create a new variable type of ray cast head and this is will be the hit info and we are going to check if our ray cast hits something so use a physics ray cast and then we are going to use the cam ray for the ray and then we are going to <laughs> out hit so we are going to put our information inside this hit variable here on our second and then the distance will be maybe a hundred unit just to make sure and for the layer mask we are going to use the variable layer mask that we have created here layer and basically if this hit something this method will return true it that means that uh, this uh, if uh, block of code will get executed so now we need to activate the cursor set active to true and then we need also to put the cursor transform dot position to our head point but I'm going to offset this bit uh, uh, upward so I'm going to add a slight value fact, uh, factor but it will be multiplied by a very small value 0 0.1 and save this so if we try to put this to our object to our canon here just drag the script and we can select our prefabs here the spear and drag this to the bullet prefab and for the cursor we are going to use the circle object that we have created here uh, on our scene the 2d object here and for the layer we can select default layer or everything would be okay and if we play this we can see that our cursor it should be moving let's check this okay okay sorry <laughs> one thing we haven't uh, execute this uh, method so let's execute this in update first save this and let's go back and see if the cursor is working now uh, as you can see uh, whenever we move the mouse here we have the cursor are uh, the cursor are following our mouse but relative to the plane here and now we need to add more code inside so let's create a vector of velocity initial or we can just name this vo and now we are going to calculate our velocity from our target which the hit point this target the the point where our rays intersect with the ground here uh, from the physics ray cast and the origin would be our transform position the cannon position and since this script is on the cannon we can use the transform that position and for the time we can 
insert any value I'm going to use a uh, one value of one and it will be one second here and we need to put semicolon here I forgot and okay so now we can set the rotation of our cannon to this factor here so let's set the rotation to a quaternion look rotation and just use the VO, vec uh, VO vector here that we have created and it will make the cannon always looking at the, the, the angle of the initial velocity and now we need to add another if whenever the mouse is click the left click then we can start shooting so if we click mouse then we are going to create a new temporary rigid body variable and inside this variable we are going to instantiate our bullet prefabs and for the transition uh, sorry for the the sorry for the position we are going to use the empty game object that we created in front of the canon object here so now we need to create a reference to it so create a new transform variable sorry transform here and then uh, just name this shoot point and we can use that value here so we are going I'm going to change this transform position to a shoot point so it will represent the more accurate starting position and let's just copy this uh, code here and paste this here and also set the rotation to a the default rotation which is quaternion identity and one is instantiated we can set its velocity sorry set the velocity of the rigid body that we have instantiated to our VO which is our initial uh, velocity here that we have calculated before and whenever we are not colliding with this I'm going to set an else statement here and I'm going to disable our cursor set to false okay so I'm going to save this and let's go back to our scene if we go to our script here under the canon object we have a new slot here shoot point so I'm going to drag this object here and save the scene and let's play it so whenever I rotate this as you can see that our cannon is tilting upwards and if we go out outside the screen the cursors get hidden and if we click it will fire exactly the ball and the ball will fall on our point here so what so this is basically how you create a projectile and of course you can create whenever the ball is uh, collide with the ground it will explode and it will injure the enemy unit near near of the explosion and you can create some sort of a real-time strategy games okay so with this uh, tutorial you can see that we can we can use the equation from a uh, physics equation to simulate a physical uh, behavior inside unity i hope uh, this tutorial is, use is useful and you like uh, the tutorial and if you like this uh, please hit that subscribe button uh, and if you have any questions uh, don't forget just uh, leave in the comments below and I'll try I do my best to answer it I see you in the next episode bye